Hi, this is 100 and 100, where we are reviewing 100 VR games in 100 days. Today, we're looking at Guns and Stories Bulletproof VR. Guns and Stories Bulletproof is a really fun and funny and intense game that lets you shoot pistols and then rail guns and then Tesla laser shocking guns. There's just a lot of wacky guns and a lot of wacky bad guys that you get to shoot at all while you hear the narration of your grandfather tell you what it was like back in the gunslinging wild wild west as he fought bad guy after bad guy after bad guy until he was victorious and got back his sweetheart. In our VR Gear Game Reviews, we try to cover as many aspects of the game as possible so that you can make an informed decision before you try or buy one of these VR titles. Guns and Stories Bulletproof is a really fun game. We highly recommend it. And let's jump into the review so that you can make a decision for yourself. <laughs> Let's start by talking about how to get up and running with Guns and Stories Bulletproof. This game is available on the Steam Store, the Oculus Store, and part of a Vive Port Infinity subscription. It is not, however, available on the PSVR Store. The download file is 4 gigabytes in size, and you can buy this game for $19.99 if you're not going to get it from the Vive Port Infinity subscription. Jumping into gameplay, you're presented with a game menu that is represented by little figurines that represent three different stages, all with three different levels inside of each, totaling nine different opportunities to up your skills, fire crazy different guns, and hear the story from your grandfather, how he conquered the Wild West. <laughs> This game is a gallery shooting type game with a story that is really the most dominating feature. I guess you could also say that the crazy guns are also one of the more dominating features, but this game is by all intents and purposes a shooting gallery type game where you'll be firing different weapons at enemies as they pop up from behind barrels or shoot at you from behind balconies or charge in your direction with swords in hand from any direction. This game is a lot of fun, it's a lot of action, and a shooting gallery game like this one should definitely be part of everybody's library. This game is played from a first person perspective, but you are actually experiencing the game from a third person perspective because you are experiencing what your grandfather is telling you happened to him back in the day. So you get to fire the weapons as if you were the grandfather, and the grandson gets to be the grandfather in the story and fire the weapons. All that to say, you play the gunslinging grandpa and the story is told to you as if you were the grandson. The theme of this game is old time Western with cowboys and bandits and other really strangely dressed individuals. But there's a great mix of futuristic items in the game like drones, and really advanced weaponry that allows you to shoot rocket-propelled grenades or strangely named guns that allow you to shock entire crowds of people and burn them all to a crisp. But what really makes this game stand apart is the story that is being told to you constantly during gameplay. There is a narration and there's also a conversation that's happening between a grandfather and his grandson as the story unfolds and as you are fighting off the bad guys. Your fighting and the story go hand in hand during the entire game and there's even times where the grandson will go and get the grandfather some more whiskey so that he will continue telling the story. All of this to make for a really engaging game that also makes you want to stay longer. There were times where we were about to get out of the game, but a new cool weapon or a new cool element of the story was introduced and we couldn't leave the game because we really wanted to know what was gonna happen next. We wanted to know how each new gun performed and we wanted to know how many people we could take out with whatever new weapon we were given. It was a lot of fun, really engaging, and the story is what made this really shine. <laughs> 
The controls of this game were incredibly simple and the guns don't need to be reloaded. The only time you need to pause to reload is in between pulling the trigger. Quite honestly, there is no gun in the world that could fire as many rounds as we did continuously without having to be reloaded, but hey, that's okay. And fortunately, Grandpa explained in the game why this was happening and he dismissed any suggestion that reloading was ever necessary back when he was fighting in these battles. The only issue we had with the controls was figuring out the best way to aim the guns that require two hands to hold them. One hand had to be in front and the other behind and they would rotate and aim based on your alignment of their hands. There were no real scopes that you were looking down, but there was a target and you could see where the bullets and projectiles were flying to help you aim better. However, it made it difficult to properly aim because of the one hand in front of the other aiming style when you're holding the two-handed guns. Other than that, the controls were actually very natural because there was only one button to push and that was the trigger. During the menu, the only other button you'd push is the grip. You'd squeeze the grip to select, pull the trigger to fire your weapon. That's it. Super simple controls. The only issue we had was the two-handed guns. The alignment caused a little bit of difficulty in those really heated battle moments. For music and sound, this game was a lot of fun. The best part about the sound, of course, was the narration that you're hearing and the story being told. The guns made different sounds as you shot them, but not terribly noticeable. There was a soundtrack in the background, but it seemed to be the same track every level. Some banjo playing, old folksy type sound. And the spatial audio was actually what really shined here. And it was incredibly helpful to know where your enemies were because this game has you looking in a full 180 degrees arena. Fully to your right and fully to your left, above you and beneath you if you're standing up on a platform, enemies were coming from all directions. And as a result, being able to hear where where they're shooting from was crucial to not being eliminated yourself and finding where they're shooting from. So the spatial audio was done exceptionally well in this game. For player movement, you will play this game from a standing or sitting position and you'll also be standing in VR in one place. You are able to dodge bullets by leaning left or right or ducking below whatever barriers in front of you, but we found that it was a little bit disorienting when you would lean left to right. The tracking for this game didn't quite match your leaning from left to right. In fact, the world somewhat shifted when you would lean from left to right, and we'll talk about that in motion sickness. But you are able to move up and down and left and right by leaning. You're also able to rotate, which is probably one of the most important things to do. So if you want to avoid any motion sickness, up and down or rotation, don't lean. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit more about motion sickness. Games like this one are usually very low impact and will not cause motion sickness. And if you adopt a good strategy for this one, you won't experience motion sickness. But I was playing this game and I was leaning left and right a lot. I could have been knocking the bullets away with my guns or ducking down, but I was sitting on a swivel stool and so I wasn't gonna do any ducking. I wanted to just avoid the bullets by leaning. However, this game seems to be mapped to a single center point and when you lean, the world seems to not adopt the proper parallax for objects in the distance and the world seems to shift unnaturally when you lean. As a result, I did experience some motion sickness when I would do that and that's mostly because I decided to play this game sitting in a stool. And a lot of people also don't want to be standing on their feet while they're in a game like this. So motion sickness was the result of improper tracking when you would lean out of the center position. If you don't lean out of the center position, if you limit your movement to up and down by ducking behind the barriers or rotating left or right to find the enemies and shoot them, you won't experience much motion sickness at all. So take that strategy into the game if you'd like or be aware that moving the way that I did may cause a little bit of motion sickness and disorientation. <laughs> For environment and immersion, it's a pretty good indication that you're in a really great game when you don't want to leave the game, when you're waiting to see what happens next. And this game is exactly like that. We couldn't wait to see what next weapon we were going to be given. We couldn't wait to hear what funny anecdote the grandpa was going to say to the grandson. And we couldn't wait to see what crazy boss was at the end of the level we were playing. All of this made for a very immersive environment and it all was really fun to be in. You wanted to stay, you wanted to play, and the game wasn't so difficult that you became frustrated. 
One item of slight frustration is when you do get eliminated by the bandits, your restart point is far, far back at the very beginning of the stage. Your stage is measured by the percentage of opponents that you've eliminated. And if you're at 90% and you've been playing it for five, 10 minutes, going back to 0% eliminations is kind of a hard pill to swallow. And that's honestly when we would leave the game after we were eliminated with a very high percentage of the level completed. The checkpoint is zero and you've been playing a long time and you had a lot of success up to that point. It's very frustrating in those situations. Otherwise, we really enjoyed playing this one. All right, so let's look at the overall scorecard for Guns and Stories Bulletproof VR, starting with theme and story. We were in love with the story of this game. We couldn't get enough of it. It was very captivating and it drew us into the game like we've never been drawn into a game before. Even though a lot of it was stuff that you could laugh at, the story was really great here. We're giving this game a 10 out of 10, a perfect score for story and theme for Guns and Stories. For controls, we're giving this game a seven out of 10. We love simple game controls, and this game definitely delivers in that. The only control button that you are playing with is pulling the trigger. Other than that, you're aiming. And so out of the two things that you need during gameplay, pulling the trigger and aiming, the game did exceptionally well when it came to single-handed weapons that you could fire in any direction. Where the game could do some improving is in the two-handed weapons that require you to align your front and back hand to fire a weapon. This is a very difficult thing to pull off. The game developers did an all right job, but there's room for improvement there. It becomes frustrating at times when you're trying to shoot something in front of you or off in the distance using that type of aiming mechanism. So a seven out of 10 for controls. For music and sound, we're giving this game a seven out of 10. This is a good score and the music and sound here was really great. The best part about the sound and the music was the narration and the sound effects from your guns and the thugs. The thing that could be improved here is the variation in the music that is played while you are in gameplay. So a seven out of 10 for music and sound. For player movement, this game is getting an eight out of 10. There isn't a lot of movement here. And we love VR games that have the world come to you rather than you traveling through it at a rapid pace and getting motion sick right away. The score is not a perfect score. It's still super high. The limitations here have to do with leaning from left to right and the world tracking is not quite accurate and it caused some motion sickness, which is the next point. So an eight out of 10 for player movement. For motion sickness, we're giving this game a seven out of 10. Now, a game like this that is played from a stationary position has the potential for a perfect motion sickness score, but this game violated one of the rules of motion sickness in that when you lean from left to right, the world tracking does not quite respond properly. As a result, we became motion sick. We were hoping we wouldn't because we wanted to play even more of the game, but we did become a little motion sick. We had to take the headset off, take a little break. So a seven out of 10 for motion sickness. For environment and immersion, this game is getting an extremely high score of nine out of 10. The environment was incredibly engaging. There were people coming at you from all different angles, from high, low, to your full right, to your full left. You have to be on your toes and vigilant. This game is definitely deserving of a nine out of 10 for environment and immersion. And now for the overall score, Guns and Stories Bulletproof VR is getting a very good score of an eight out of 10. This is an excellent score for a VR game and we loved playing this one. We highly recommend you go and get this. If you're new to VR, this is a low impact, low intensity game as far as motion sickness goes. If you play it right, and we really think this would be a great one to introduce friends and families to if you are trying to get people excited about VR. This has been 100 in 100, where we are reviewing 100 VR games in 100 days. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you can be notified tomorrow when we release another VR game review. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one.